Hey guys, welcome to our December 2021 net worth update. We got through the holiday season without breaking the bank too badly. The markets were very volatile in December, but we did see some gains toward the end of the month. Even though the markets ended much better than November, my net worth did not increase much more because I did stack on the debt pretty heavily this month. So after everything, my net worth for the month of December 2021 is on this channel, I talk about all things finance, wealth building, and how you can achieve the life of your dreams through financial independence. If you want to join me on this journey to financial independence, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Okay, let me start off with a quick refresher on how net worth is calculated. You add up all your assets, like your cash, stocks, and home equity, then subtract all your liabilities like your student loans, credit cards, and car loans. The resulting number is your net worth. And know that it is possible to have a negative net worth. This is where I track my monthly assets. We have been tracking everything and updating you guys every month for the past 6 months now. To start things off, we have our $1,000 cash emergency fund. I always try to keep $1,000 in cash at any given time so that I know I have a small buffer just in case life throws us a curveball. Below that, we have our other cash positions. I held on to all my paychecks this month and kept them sitting in my Chase checking account. I normally transfer most of my paychecks directly to Robinhood, but I guess when I saw my credit card bill, I just procrastinated and held on to all the cash. My next payment is not due until the beginning of February, so I will probably initiate a transfer into Robinhood sometime this week. Because of this, my Chase checking account is currently sitting at $143,541.92. Below that is my BECU savings account. Cash in this account is used to pay off my credit card bill every single month. I paid off my December statement this month, which was not much, and I only put cash in here once a month to pay the bills, so there's only $13 in there currently. Below that was my closed Capital One 360 money market account, where I kept money that would pay my mortgage every month. I have not had a mortgage for a few months now after selling my rental property, so this item will drop off the list within the next few months. The last of my cash accounts is my Yada Bank High Interest Savings Account. This is my main emergency fund with $5,000 in it. The $5,000 is enough to cover my rent for about 6 months. Yada is not a normal high interest savings account. This account does pay monthly interest, but it also has a lottery system where you can win money every week. What's better than getting paid every week to play the lottery? The more money you deposit in the account, the more tickets you get. If you or someone you know might benefit from a high yield savings account like this, you can check out our referral link in the description below. You get bonus tickets for signing up with that link, which will increase your chances of winning up to $10 million or even a Tesla. So that's all my cash accounts. In total, I have $149,701.55 in cash right now. Moving on, we have my investment accounts. As I mentioned earlier, the stock market was pretty upbeat the last two weeks of December, but the gains were not very impressive for my portfolio this month. The first account is my Chase Brokerage. The account dipped just ever so slightly this month. We can see that over the last six months, this account has moved very little. This account is made up of mostly growth stocks with little to no dividends to reinvest, so its value is highly dependent on the underlying companies. The account started off with an initial $14,000 investment about six years ago, so it's been putting in work in the background all these years. I'm actually going to be transferring all the assets from this account into my Robinhood Fire Fund within the next few weeks to centralize my accounts, and I do have access to margin now, so I might borrow against those assets. Next is my Fire Fund account in Robinhood. I did not really make any deposits this month into this account, so I have been burning through some of my cash positions. I have a large cash balance in this account for my options trading, but I'm actually not really enjoying the options trading anymore. Yes, it is generating additional income, but it's actually kind of stressful too. This account is supposed to be my set it and forget it account, where I just collect monthly paychecks. There will come a point where I need to decide between utilizing my full cash position for my income stocks or options trading to generate income. I do not know when that will be. This account is about 30% cash and 70% stocks at the moment, 
and is currently valued at $110,302.67, which is a nice $5,000 increase over last month. This is my main brokerage that I do invest heavily into every single week. If you want to see exactly what I buy every week, make sure to join me every Friday for our Fire Fund Friday series. The next account is my Fidelity ESPP account. An ESPP account, or Employee Stock Purchase Plan account, is an account where I store cash from every paycheck, and once every quarter I get to purchase company stock at a 10% discount. The account is currently sitting at $4,447.74. Fidelity was supposed to use this money to buy company stock on December 31st, but I have not seen the trade confirmation yet, so we have the cash value listed here. Below the ESPP account is my Fidelity Brokerage account. This account stores all my company stock that I buy or get vested. Vesting is when my stock rewards from bonuses get deposited into my account. My company's stock was able to recover just a bit by the end of December, pushing the account value over $100,000 for the first time. Lastly here, we have my BlockFi account where I store my Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin took a huge hit in December, so this account took quite a dip. The account dropped by almost 20% in a month. I currently invest $50 per week into Bitcoin and Ethereum. I don't have a large position in digital currencies, but a small position is better than no position. If you want to start investing into cryptocurrencies, I will leave a referral link to BlockFi in the description below. They also pay you monthly interest for any crypto you hold in the account. If you sign up using a referral link, you will get $10 in free Bitcoin. So in total, my taxable investments accounts increased from $255,342 last month to $263,647.67 this month, an increase of about $8,000. Even with November's market meltdown, we saw a larger increase in November than we did this month, which kind of sucks. But market values are always out of our control. All we can do is sit back and hope to get paid. The last investment account I have is my 401k. This account moved up a tiny bit from $126,000 to just under $130,000. The last paycheck of November actually maxed out my 401k for the year, so my last two paychecks of the year made no contributions to this account. The IRS did announce a contribution limit increase for 2022, so I'll get to contribute more and get even more company match, so I'm excited. The last section here is we're tracking my home value, which is a non-liquid asset. I no longer own a home and do not plan on owning a home for the foreseeable future, so this section will drop off within the next few months as well. So this brings my total assets for the month of December 2021 up to $542,807.08, which is about a $16,000 increase over November's $526,000. And that's it for the assets, let's walk through my liabilities. My only liabilities are my credit cards. Like I mentioned earlier, I took on a large amount of debt this month, which affected my overall net worth increase. Using my BCU cashback visa, I paid for my next quarter of school, which brought my total balance to $2,701.78. I do not qualify for financial aid due to my income. I am lucky that my company will reimburse this expense, but the cost of classes for my bachelor's program is actually double the cost of the associate's program. So I will exceed my annual reimbursement limit within the first six months of the year. It sucks, but at least I don't have to take out any student loans and I can pay off my credit card every month. Below that, we have my Chase Freedom credit card. I did pay off this card a few months back. I do not use this card at all, so it will sit at zero balance and the bank will probably cancel this card eventually due to lack of activity. Lastly is my Apple card that I opened a few months ago to purchase a new phone. I'm doing the minimum interest-free payments on it, so it will be paid off in two years. The current balance is $680. The last section here is for a mortgage. I don't have a mortgage anymore, so it will drop off eventually as well. My total debts for the month of December 2021 is $3,381.78. If we look at the trend of my debts, it looks like I'm just taking on more and more debt every single month but there will be hills and valleys over the next two years until I finish with school. My regular spending is actually quite low. So for the month of December 2021, my total assets are $542,807.08 and my total liabilities are $3,381.78, bringing my total net worth to $539,425.30. 
an increase of $14,003.94 over last month, which is an increase of over 2.5%. Our net worth increased just slightly more than last month and beat our projected net worth goal for 2021. I have been personally tracking my net worth since February of this year and it has increased by $153,000 in the last 10 months. At our current rate of growth, we should be able to achieve a net worth of $700,000 by the end of next year. And that's it for the final net worth update of 2021. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This is one of my favorite ones to make because I get to share my overall progress with all of you. Let me know in the comments below where you're at on your journey. And as always, thank you for taking the time to join me here. I really appreciate you and I'll see you on the next one.